In this episode, we delve into digital agency project management and how artificial intelligence is changing this particular industry. Hello and welcome back to the Project Management Podcast at pm-podcast.com. This is the live stream for episode 488 and I'm Cornelius Fichtner. Thank you so much for joining us once again. For those of you who are listening to this episode recorded, and by listening I mean uh, you know, you're not seeing the video, then yeah, this is a video episode. If you're not getting the video, please do look for the play video episode in your podcast app or simply visit pm podcast 488 to play the video streaming from our website. So, in this episode, we are going to look um, into how digital agencies are harnessing artificial intelligence for their project management approaches. And if the term digital agency is new to you, then don't worry, because we'll explain exactly what this is. But if you do work for a digital agency, then you know AI is coming. Um, be it as enhancements to your project management tools, budgeting your projects, or in the creative process, AI has arrived, it is here to stay, and it is changing your job for the better. And here to help us understand what changes lie ahead is Marissa Taffer, who consults for her clients in the areas of project management and content creation. She joins us today from Philadelphia. Let me bring her in. Hello, Marissa. Good morning and welcome to the program. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Of course. For those of you who don't know Marissa, let me quickly do a introduction here. Very briefly, Marissa helps digital agencies and marketing teams and creatives spend more time doing what they do best. And that is obviously creating for their clients. She's a PMP and a CSM as well with a passion for projects and change management processes. You can find her business at mtafferconsulting.com. Dot com. Marissa, to get us started, uh, let's take a look ahead. And please tell me, what do you feel our audience will be able to take away from our conversation here? What will they walk away with today? Sure. I think the most important thing to, to understand is that AI is, is going to be another tool in our toolbox. I know there's a lot of chatter right now about what it is, how we should be using it, how we shouldn't be using it. Is it right? Is it wrong? But if you think of it as another tool in your toolbox, so you've got your project management tools, you've got your team, you've got AI, how can we leverage and, and harness this as a tool to make us better as project managers, to make us more efficient? Um, and, and I think, or at least what I hope folks will get out of, of our conversation today is some, some really tactical ways to dive in and do that, and that it's not this big, scary thing that's coming to take all of our jobs. Wonderful. Thank you very much for this look ahead here. And uh, for those of you who are joining us live, if you have a question, please do feel free to use the chat, just like uh, Luis Eduardo has here, uh, who joins us today from Brazil. Just type your question into the chat. I'll bring it up like this and we'll take a look and answer your question. So digital agencies, let's begin with a couple of definitions. What is a digital agency and what do we mean by digital agency project management? Marissa, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, were you looking to me? Yeah, so really, you know, digital agencies, at least in my lens and the work that I do, are are agencies that focus on creating, you know, it could be website design and build, it might be managing things like email marketing, paid search. Um, some analytics work, but it also could be things like creating custom software, creating custom apps. Um, so there, there's a depth and breadth of agencies. If you are listening to this or watching it, and I didn't mention some of the services that your agency provides, that doesn't mean you are not a digital agency. There's just so much variety of, of the scope of service. Um, in my practice, I mostly work with agencies that are focused on things like website design and build, digital advertising, and occasionally some custom software. 
um, really, you know, moving in the in the marketing space. Mm -hmm. Okay. What I have done here is I have tried to uh, give us a summary here. A digital agency focuses primarily on marketing your business products and services in the digital world. I heard all of those words from you. And I think what's missing here could be the apps, right? App software. Um, and there are some agencies that uh, companies can actually outsource those pro those types of projects to an agency um, fairly efficiently as well. So if you don't have the capability in-house, there are some, some pre-built mm. teams that can go in and do that work for you. Right. And of obviously on the side of the digital agency, then every customer and what you do for the customer becomes a project, right? Yes. Yeah, and that's what we're talking about here. The mm -hmm. projects that these digital agencies manage to market your business, product, services in the digital world, develop your app, and so on. So let's jump in into artificial intelligence here. And where is artificial intelligence showing up in project management tools today? And, and how can project managers leverage artificial intelligence to support them in their current role? What do you think? What, what's your insight here for us? So we're, we're seeing a, a lot of the big project management tools are rolling out different um, artificial intelligence capabilities directly in the tool. So Asana is launching some, some different tools within theirs to potentially suggest projects or, or, pri or help prioritize tasks for team members. We're also seeing it in Notion, which their um, AI suite it goes even more robust. And even within the documents, we're seeing the AI being able to actually help summarize. So if you're if you're running a meeting, you're running a strategy session, you're doing a discovery process with a new client as you're doing your onboarding and your client intake, you can actually leverage that functionality to help summarize those conversations. It can help you kind of prioritize action items that maybe came up in the conversation. And, and I know we'll dive more into this a bit later, but that can be really helpful, especially if you're working on a smaller team. And I know a lot of us are, are hearing the drum beats of do less with more, right? Or do less with more, try to you know maximize every minute of your time. So if you are feeling the pressure of budget cuts, I think I said that backwards, but if you if you're feeling the, the pressure from this economy and you know, we don't have the luxury of project coordinators or somebody to help you take notes or facilitate in that conversation. You know, AI might be your best friend in that situation. Um, ClickUp is another big project management tool that is also starting to leverage some of this um, AI capability. So we're seeing it directly in the tool, but then we're also seeing some new tools coming out, um, some different note-taking apps and recorders. So if you're doing a webinar or, like I said, a discovery or strategy session with a client, bringing in something like Fathom or one of these like Otter or one of the other note takers, some of these programs are leveraging AI to actually summarize these conversations. They can help you pinpoint those action items so that you as the project manager or a team lead are able to then just focus on having that conversation with your client instead of worrying about, oh, did I capture that note or like, trying to, to get a thought out, but also make sure that you're you're putting into your documentation anything that you're potentially promising that client. So I think that from that standpoint within the tool, there's a lot of power with artificial intelligence. Also on the data side that we'll talk about a little bit later, being able to take agency data, whether it's from your time tracker or estimates and being able to help you analyze that data so that we're getting better as project managers and as agency teams around estimation. Estimation is something that at least in my experience has been a real challenge for clients. So when you're creating that new scope of work, when you're thinking about kicking off a project, making sure you have the right team and that that team has exactly enough time to do the work that you've promised. So if you're, if you're under scoping work, and you need more hours, that's obviously impacting your bottom line. Um, I'm probably talking more to the agency owners and the project managers in this situation. But if your performance depends on, you know, getting those estimates right sized, potentially leveraging some of this capability can help you to, you know, see trends over time to analyze the data, to point out where, you know, hey, in, in the last 10 projects you did, you allotted, you know, 10 hours for this one task. 
every single time it's taken you between 12 and 15. So maybe we need to, to adjust those estimates before the work goes out. So I think there's a lot of places that we as PMs can start to harness some of this, this power of AI and, and use it to help make us better and more efficient in our jobs. Mm. The one thing that surprised me was the note-taking apps. And um, I would assume over time, this will become normal and everybody will be used to this. But right now, I would assume if you do something like that, you probably have to tell your customer and your client oh, yeah. and everybody who's attending, hey, there will be an AI listening into our conversation and summarizing this just so you're aware. You may even, depending on, on local legal requirements, have to get approval by everybody and buy in or at least, you know, a, a nod from everybody to do that, right? Oh, absolutely. Uh, I apologize for not mentioning that. But yes, in, yeah. in my work, in my world, a lot of these calls are already being recorded. So if you're on Zoom, you're recording it anyway. Um, and I personally never record or bring in a note taking app without getting express permission from everybody who's going to be on that call first. So if this is something that's new for you, make sure that you're asking and getting um, some informed consent. So explaining what it is, if it's a new note-taking app that you've never used, checking that confidentiality policy, understanding how that app is storing and using data, especially mm -hmm. if your agency is focused in more regulated areas. I'm, I'm thinking my healthcare agency is pharma. Um, they may have, so I don't work in those industries as much. They may have specific ones that they're allowed to use and not use just like other things. But again, always, always ask. And as we dive into some of these other use cases that are going to be more client facing, I think the big theme, at least what you'll hear from me is, is just um, communication and understanding. So, hey, you know, we're trying this new process. Here's how we're going to leverage AI. Like, how does that sit with you? And if your client is starting to pause, maybe that's not the client to try it with. <laughs> Indeed. The second thing that I noticed is it seems like all of these tools are focusing on um, the grunt work, the mundane stuff, things that take up a lot of time for us mm -hmm. project managers or, or our or project coordinators and assistants to just, I don't want to say busy work, but it's the repetitive stuff that mm -hmm. artificial intelligence can, can help us leverage and, and get better at. So... <laughs> Let's take this to the next step, because if suddenly the AI is doing it, hey, I have more time on my hands, <laughs> hopefully. So what should and can a project manager do with all that time? And for those of you listening <laughs> audio, I'm using air quotes here with all that time that you're saving. What, what should we do? What could we do? So I think it's a couple of things. First of all, you know, forget AI, when we think about some of these repetitive tasks over the last couple of years as project management software has gotten better, you know, if you're in an agency that does very, um, like, pack, like if you're selling, you know, a productized service where, you know, you're doing the same process over and over and over for your clients, or at least, you know, 80% of that process is similar with some nuance, you're probably already using project templates to, to build it out. You probably have a workflow of, client signs the contract, it goes in these places, you know, this template gets copied, we set it up. So some of these things are already moving in the direction of automation. AI just may make that happen a little faster, maybe a little bit better. Um, so when you say all that time, and now I'm using the air quotes, it, you know, it, it may free up some time, especially on that like data analysis number crunching side, I think it's going to free up time. So what should a PM or project coordinator be doing? It, it means one of two things, either you've got more time to spend on those client facing activities, making sure you've got your, you know, your agendas are really buttoned up, you're checking in with your team, getting feedback from the team, spending more time diving into some of those postmortems, retrospectives, trying to, you know, continue to look forward with that cycle of continuous improvement um, that we generally as PMs are charged with. But also it may mean that as an agency, each PM may be taking on more projects. So if you, you know, are a smaller to mid-sized agency, you run, you know, 20 projects simultaneously with four project managers, maybe 
you can run 25 or if things are you know slowing down you could potentially ask the pms to go hang out with your business development people and be helping with estimating scoping you know all of those activities that bring in more business again i'm not suggesting that the ai is now taking our jobs i'm suggesting that there are places where we can spend more of our time and attention and one of them might just happen to be growth. So if you don't, if your PMs aren't quite as busy looking at, at business development, um, I know a lot of us on the agency side, PMs are getting pulled into those processes anyway. It's like one of those things that it's like really, really important, but we're always trying to squeeze it in. So I think if I was full time in an agency and I had more time, that is the place I would probably spend it because what that's going to do for you is give you that better handoff between sales and operations. Mm -hmm. Uh, very good segue, and and I absolutely agree with you, especially if you're in an agency, you are in the project business, you're selling your project management capabilities to your clients, and the payments of your clients pays your salary and pays everybody's salary in the company here. And uh, uh, let's take this on here, because we're moving on to artificial intelligence in pricing and budgeting. And here, of course, we have two areas internal pricing and budgeting, external pricing and budgeting. And <laughs> since so many new functions and fun features are being added into these tools, does this mean that the tools are going to get more expensive? That uh, you know, the, the software vendors are going to increase our license cost? It's possible. Um, I believe Notion, I was looking at their pricing yesterday, I think that AI functionality adds about $10 a user a month. So yeah, that there may be some budget increase. But again, going back to if AI can save you, you know, three or four hours of administrative work as a PM, you know, what is your time worth versus what is increasing that license cost or potentially bringing in another tool? So that's always how I look at it is, you know, what it what is going to be the return on this investment. So if spending, you know, $10 is going to give me a $175 an hour PM more, you know, more billable time at $175. We've now paid for ourselves. So mm -hmm. that that's kind of where I'm seeing it. I have not seen anything. And if anybody who's, who's watching live wants to jump in in the comments and correct me, but I haven't seen anything that that's gone completely, you know, egregiously expensive where something that was, you know, hundreds of dollars is now, thousands of dollars or anything like that. Yeah, the only comment we got so far is from uh, Beatrice, who says, yes, administrative work. <laughs> and I think this goes back to our comment where we said, yeah, a lot of admin uh, is going to be changing here. We're still talking about AI and pricing and budgeting. And um, what about staffing? What about headcounts? Is, is artificial intelligence going to change that i mean let's let's take it the other way you said if i'm a digital agency who has five project managers and i can run 20 projects maybe with ai i can run 25 let's go the other way well maybe maybe with ai i only need four project managers to mm -hmm. manage my project so i can get rid of one uh, how about that side of things I mean, yeah, it's definitely possible. Um, I, I'm not here to encourage anybody to do that. But again, understanding the economic realities of where we are, um, it's absolutely a possibility. We are also seeing it on some of the uh, on the content side. There was a period that started probably three or four months ago. There were some maybe a little bit shorter. There were some rumblings of people using AI to replace content writers. So some of the um, more entry level junior content writer positions were being either eliminated or replaced with AI or a combination of AI and an editor. Um, I think people are starting to realize that maybe that's not quite the right move and that there is a place for AI in idea generation, brainstorming, outlining, thinking through content, but when it comes to really good marketing content, it's not the strategy that's working, especially if you're if you're plugging in the same keywords and the same prompts into these AI generators as your competitors, everybody's now ending up with the same content and there would be no differentiation within the market. And I don't think that's what any of these software agencies or um, 
anybody who's selling a product or service who needs marketing content is is really looking for. So I think we're, we're going to see that start to level out. It might look a little bit different, but I'm really hoping that, you know, like we talked about, the jobs may shift to be slightly different, not so much that there's going to be less of them is at least what I'm hoping. Um, we're, like I said, we're seeing things getting a little bit quiet in the market right now, especially on the freelance side. But um, I'm hearing rumblings of things picking up. So I'm crossing my fingers and toes that that's continuing. <laughs> yeah, yeah we'll, we'll get into, into the, the creative process and using AI to create content in just a moment. But uh, on a side note, I actually wrote an article together with ChatGPT, uh, published it, uh, very simple, very easy to do. And of course, I, I correctly attributed it to ChatGPT. It was sort of a uh, ideas coming from there. And I do think the BBC, uh, they do allow their journalists to use artificial intelligence for research, but not to write the articles, but I could be wrong. I remember reading one article on the BBC website that did that. And we're still talking about AI and pricing and budgeting. Yes. <laughs> and let, let, let's go external. Let, right now we've been focused on internal. Let's go external. Well, I'm your client. I know you're using artificial intelligence. That means you have cost savings. I expect that my project is less expensive. Uh, what do you do now? Yeah, I think that's a good point. Um, it's not something, like I said, I don't have a ton of clients that are using this client facing right now, but that, that is something that would concern me is if the client knew that we were using chat GPT to produce content, to produce briefs, to produce any product that, you know, we're selling to a client, it, it, it gets into that fuzzy area. And I know we're going to talk a little bit about legal considerations later, but it also gets into that area of ownership, of um, copyright, of you know even data accuracy, which we're going to talk about. So, um, you know, I, I think to your point about having written an article in conjunction with ChatGPT, I don't think that it's a great idea to be passing off anything that was generated by AI as something that your agency produced. Um, and and the, this is me personally speaking, without you know talking about the legal considerations, but I, I would expect to see that if you're leveraging that technology or having the client leverage that technology, so maybe you're selling, you know, we're seeing people start to call themselves, you know, prompt engineers or whatever. So you're just helping to prompt those questions for AI and then having the client then go do the work. So yeah, there, there could be some potential for, for some cost savings for clients, but I would really hesitate as a project manager to allow a, a team that I'm running to have AI fully do something and then hand it to a client and say, we did it and pay us for it. Like that just to me, as I'm saying it out loud, feels really yucky. Yeah. And, and so we've just moved over into our next topic, as promised, artificial intelligence in the creative process in regards to uh, content management. And a story from, from our side, we do a lot of digital marketing, obviously as a podcast and, and, and online webinar developer, fully online. Um, we noticed we had a lot of people uh, that were inactive on our mailing list. So I basically went to chat GPT and said, hey, I need a re-engagement campaign for these people. Uh, tell me how many emails I should send. Write these emails. And literally, we used 85% of what ChatGPT uh, suggested we should do. Because it was well written. It was, it was focused on, uh, on our target market. Obviously, the prompt is important, what you ask the system to do. And, and that, that is a new skill that many project managers may need to to learn, you know, prompting, prompting these tools. And, and so for us, it was a time saver. It was absolutely wonderful to be able to do that. And what are some other areas where you can see content being developed using artificial intelligence? Yeah, I think ideation. So when you're, if you're sitting down to write a new content <laughs> strategy and you kind yeah. of want to know what's out there, what's already been written on the topic, what are people asking about? There, there are tons of tools on the market, you know, and then Google Search Console comes to mind uh, and some other SEO tools. But I think being able to, like you said, create that prompt from chat GPT and be like, hey, you know, what are what are the topics if we're talking about, I'm just going to draw from project management, you know, if I'm writing about project management, if I'm writing about trends in project management, like what's already out there? 
because what that's then going to do is like you said, you know, you may take that and put your own spin on some of it or talk about how, you know, if you're an agency marketing yourself, you might talk about how you're doing it. Some case studies, if you're writing on behalf of a client, what is your client doing? What are their customers doing? So having some of that ideation along the way, um, it could, I haven't done it yet, but I'm wondering if it couldn't be used to even write some content briefing. So if you're hiring a team of writers at your agency, and that mm -hmm. writing briefs can be really tedious. So like you said, if ChatGPT could get you, you know, 70% of the way there, and then a human does the rest to get them that briefing, but then I would expect that that human is, you know, working with the brief, challenging the brief, bringing new ideas to the content. Otherwise, like we said at the beginning, everybody in the industries are just going to have the same content pumping out all over the place. And we're just going to have this giant cesspool of content. Um, and then accuracy, especially when you're talking oh, yeah. about um, statistics, research studies in, in content marketing, at least on the agency side. From my experience, you know, we, we talk a lot about data sources, you know, so if I'm writing an article today and I'm pulling a statistic from 2015, like that feels too old to me. I, I want to get as close to, to what's happening now as I possibly can. Yeah. And this is something that is obviously with ChatGPT an issue. Uh, it stops in 2021 at this time time of recording here. I believe they are working on releasing an updated version for. It Chrome may have just released. Oh, I'm okay. Not, I'm not positive. Potentially I was digging today yeah. <laughs> they released that. I, yeah. I was digging around getting ready to talk to you about this, and I thought I had seen something about it going past 2021. So if it's not there at the time of this recording, it will be very soon. But exactly. again, and there, there is that gap in its training. Google's version. Google's version is fully accurate, uh, up to date to, to today. So that, that is never a concern. But obviously, accuracy, uh, correctness, and fit for purpose, all of that, when you develop, when you create this type of content, it's up to you, the human, to do this. So yes, mm -hmm. again, the artificial intelligence can help you, can can develop something based on what you're doing. And then you need to review, you need to update, and you are responsible making sure that this is fit for purpose. For example, if you have two customers and they want a very similar article, well, each of them has a different voice. They mm -hmm. speak to their customers in a different voice. So you literally have to instruct the system to say, hey, and by the way, here is an example of the voice customer A is using. Write your suggestion in this style. Here is a voice from customer B. Write it in that style. That's an important thing to do. And let's talk a little bit more about SEO here. Where do you see these artificial intelligence tools being able to help with SEO? Is it just keyword research? Is it writing keyword-rich articles? What is it? I think it's going to be more than that. Um, and I think it's also a little too soon to really know, but we are here. I, I'm hearing rumblings in the communities that I belong to uh, of folks working in those industries about how search is going to change. So, you know, we talked about prompting, prompting chat GPT or Bard, which is Google's to help us write things. You can ask it to help you find things, you know, Hey, what is, what is the latest statistic on this? It, it will so I'm curious if people aren't going to start using AI as search. Um, so it's not just the content generation, it's how are people using it to find things, to understand things. So I think that if, and this is not my deep area of expertise, but I do think it is going to change how we, how we think about SEO and how we do SEO. Um, but again, they talked about that years ago with voice search, you know, everything having to be optimized for voice. I don't think it ever got as big as they said, but that doesn't mean it's not there. So, you know, searching through mm -hmm. Alexa, searching through Hey Siri, um, all of those things were really, really talked about for a really long time. So I think the same thing is probably going to happen with some of these AI tools. Again, I'm not deeply ingrained in SEO, but I do manage some SEO projects. So I, as a project manager, am very curious to, to continue to see how it evolves.
My prompts for ChatGPT are usually like this long, very detailed, <laughs> very specific. I do, yeah. I do not want to give it that as, as a voice input. No, that is, is way too much. And by the way, for those of you who are wondering, SEO, what on earth are they talking about? Search engine optimization. That's what SEO stands for. And in that regard, um, I don't write meta titles and meta tags anymore. I simply copy paste the page that I need a meta title for, meta description for, uh, paste it into chat GPT or BART and say, write me a meta title, write me a meta description. Please follow um, best practices for keyword insertion, length, and all that. And once it gives it back to me, I said, can you confirm that this is the appropriate length and that the appropriate keywords have been added in? And then oftentimes it comes back and says, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, didn't think of that. Here's a better version that matches what you actually need. So you always, always have to double check your work. Um, what about user experience? Do you think there is a case for digital agencies to use artificial intelligence in regards to the design of the user experience that uh, that the end user has on a, on a website? Sure. I mean, I think just like anything else, when we're talking about ideation, when we're talking about research, I think user experience, you know, and potentially even design is a place that we could start to see artificial intelligence come in. Um, things like, you know, as you're thinking through site website navigation, best practices, as you're thinking about user journeys, you know, potentially leveraging a suite of tools where AI is one of them, but also things like heat mapping with it with a tool like Hotjar, and, and really looking at, you know, we talked a lot about data. So what does that data tell you? What is best practice? Um, I, I do think that there is a place there. Um, even I, I've heard people, you know, at prompting chat GPT for, for things with code. So I'm almost wondering if, if you're not getting stuck, if, if you know, Pairing is, is something that we do right now, but is there a way to almost pair with chat GPT and have chat GPT potentially help you think through sticky situations? Again, we, we talked a lot about accuracy. So double, triple checking, checking those sources. Um, I almost wonder, depending on the source, if there are legal concerns with the piracy and things getting into the system. I know there was a, a case study a while ago where a company dumped some proprietary information into the tool and then it became available in places it shouldn't have. So I, I think it's a little soon. I think we need to put some guardrails around that, especially as we're thinking about things that we're building. But again, when it comes to things like research, when it comes to things like looking at best practice, I, I think this can be really, really helpful and, and powerful, especially in those early discovery stages of a project or even asking, asking one of these programs to show you an example of something so that as you're asking your customer, you know, do you prefer navigation A, do you prefer navigation B, and here's what they look like out in the world. Um, you know, obviously we're not building either navigation A or B for you, but we can start to use those things as inspiration. It's something we've done, you know, in the digital space early in the discovery process, you know, for years of saying, show, it, show us references, show us things you like, show us things you hate, show us things that, you know, you think your customers are going to like or hate, and then we can start to test those things so that when we're building for you, we're building the right thing. Mm -hmm. You mentioned that we were going to talk about legal considerations and, and compliance. So here we are. Legal and <laughs> compliance is our next topic. I did mention two areas where we, on our end, used uh, artificial intelligence. One was that article that I wrote together with ChatGPT, where I clearly stated this was written by Cornelius Fichtner and uh, ChatGPT together. And then my second use case was the re-engagement campaign, where ChatGPT wrote four emails for us, and we just sent them out, updated with added our uh, language into it. And obviously, at the bottom of this email, it doesn't say, by the way, 80% of this email was written <laughs> by ChatGPT. does not. And, uh, what about doing this in an agency environment? Does using AI, in particular generative AI, to generate content, whether it's images, whether it is text, does that open up the team to any sort of risk, any sort of legal considerations? 
Um, I'm going to start this segment by saying once very loud and clear that I am not a lawyer and you should consult <laughs> yours. <laughs> um, so let's start there with this is not legal information. This is my experience as a project manager. I would say, yes, there is a place, you know, first of all, better to be safe than sorry. If you think that there could be some legal ramification to what you are about to do, call your lawyer or don't do it. <laughs> so that's thing number one. Um, like you said, generative AI, if um, I actually, I think I had this happen where a, uh, a client of mine had hired a writer the writer sent back an article that to me looked like it was written with chat GPT and I was a little concerned about it. So again, the question is if I'm hiring a freelance writer to write a, a piece for me and they're just turning, they're prompting chat GPT with the outline I gave them and, and sending it back and charging me, you know, hundreds of dollars for the piece. Is it legal? First of all, is it legal? Maybe, maybe not. Is it ethical? Definitely not. Um, I, I personally do not think that that is an ethical thing to be doing. Um, like you mentioned, first of all, you were doing it for your business, which is a little bit different than retaining the service of an agency and having it, somebody do it on your behalf without your consent. So I, I think a couple of threads that we've talked about through, through this program are informed consents, making sure that everybody knows what's going on, how it's happening, um, and, and managing those client expectations. So if your client is expecting you know, 1500 words of, of high quality thought leadership, and you're handing them fluffy, puffy chat GPT text without any editing or refinement, I think that's a big problem. So I guess going back to the original question is, yeah, there, there's definitely some, some still some legal and compliance areas. I've also heard um, on another podcast in, in the freelance writing realm around, you know, rights and ownership, if you're pulling something out of chat GPT, you don't legally own those words. So you can't put your copyright on it. You can't stop people from stealing it. Um, I think this is a place where, you know, beyond the scope of practice of a project manager, we really, really need to be talking to, to our legal experts. And I think the biggest message here is for us as PMs to, to put on that risk management lens and say, you know, if this is how we're doing this, does our client understand what we're doing? Are there any potential legal ramifications and how do I, as a project manager, navigate that within my agency? Mm. And many project managers who don't work for external clients, they're probably twiddling their thumbs now going, I wonder when they're getting back to something more interesting for me because <laughs> this does not apply. Yes, it does. Think of it this way. If you are a project manager who manages internal projects only, how much time do you spend writing status reports okay so you can use an internal artificial intelligence to help you write your status report your weekly monthly written status report do you have to disclose to your stakeholders who wrote this is it you who wrote this is it the artificial intelligence who wrote this what is it for you in your particular field right there. We don't want to go into detail here because that's not what we're focusing on. We're, we're more into digital agency project management here. So let's, let's, let's go back to that. Um, is there, and again, you are not a legal, you're, you're not a lawyer, so this is not legal advice. This is just, you know, a, a, a brain function using and, and giving some advice here. Um, is there specific language that we should start adding to our contracts with our clients uh, about we are using uh, artificial intelligence to help us in the ideation process, in the content development process? Or have you even got, seen the other way where a client came to you and said, uh -uh, we don't want you to. Everything 100% has to be. So either way, uh, where do you think this is going? Yeah. Um, first, first question. Yes, I think there should be language in the contract. And I think, again, that's something that you want to work through with your, le your legal partners um, or an external legal team who has some, some expertise in AI as well as intellectual property. Um, so I think that's really important um, as PMs that we are raising that flag. Personally, in my practice, um, I do some free I think you mentioned this earlier, I do some freelance writing. I did have one of my clients reach out, um, basically like my editor's boss, 
and sent a very long, very nice note about how they, you know, are hiring us for our expertise. Um, and it is, it is something where we're all subject matter experts. So hiring us for our expertise, they do not want us using AI in any way, shape, form or function, and they will be running all of our work through AI detection software. Um, I've also seen there is a, um, in the freelance world, there's a, a platform called Authory where you can leave a, you can build a portfolio. The thing that's really nice about it is it, it helps you auto filter. So if I'm pitching somebody on a certain topic and I write about, you know, three or four, I can filter down and send somebody a more personalized um portfolio and say, hey, here's all my work in, in, you know, the sales world, in the pet world, in the project management world, whatever niche I'm talking about. And they're now offering certification for folks to say, you know, this author is, is like human content certified, which some of us were really, really surprised to start seeing. But that's getting out there. And I think there is, you know, a demand for folks to not use it in certain ways. So I know we talked about some ways that it's possible to use it, but you know, it really comes back to how, how do you communicate that to your client? How do you make sure you understand that you and your client are on the same page about what's okay and what's not okay for that particular client? Mm -hmm. Excellent. Thank you very much. Um, moving on to our next topic, data analysis and insights using AI. And by the way, this photograph here, this, this background image, I've chosen this intentionally there with the arms going up because if you are a project manager and you use artificial intelligence properly for data analysis, insights, uh, and those kind of number crunching, uh, for example, it gets easier. It, it, you become a superwoman, you become a superman, and it's so much easier to do this. As an example, um, I uh, plugged our profit and loss from this year into artificial intelligence and said, where should I start looking into to save money? And it came back very quickly and told me where I should focus on. And while some ideas were completely wrong, for example, it said, oh, by the way, you should also look at rent. Uh, we don't have any rent. Everybody <laughs> works from home. Uh, yeah, so the other eight items that it told me to look into, Perfect. So for me, that was very, very good. So question is here for you. Where can digital agencies leverage artificial intelligence for data analysis? Where should the focus be? Yeah, again, I think it's really going to speed it up and also give you a little bit more power. So we've been, you know, we've been using Excel and Excel formulas or Google Sheets, you know, whatever your agency uses for years and tracking, you know, to certain metrics. I think to your point, um, you know, getting accurate data, maybe hooking hooking up your AI with your project management tool or your time tracker and using it to really understand um, things like capacity, things like, like you mentioned, profit and loss is a really good one. So, and you touched on this earlier is, you know, when you look at your P&L, there's like the internal cost and what you're billing your clients, um, obviously, it should be internal cost plus, um, you know, the overhead and, and the things you need to do to, to be able to be a profitable agency. So being able to look at those things and being able to look at expenditure over time, I think that AI just gives us, you know, a little bit more power and can maybe help us think through that in a way that just kind of trying to wing it on our own with some with an Excel sheet and some formulas doesn't. Um, the other thing that I will say about it is just like any other data analysis, you know, the numbers are only as good as the context. So making sure that we as project managers are, are contextualizing what we're seeing and hearing with, you know, what's really happening. So for example, you know, let's say I have three graphic designers, one that's more focused on doing things like logos, one that's doing kind of some mid range stuff like, um, sales sheets or um, even print materials, and then another one that's actually designing web pages. If you look at the number of tasks on each of their plate at a given time, you, you may, you know, just at a glance be like, well, why does designer one have 20 tasks and why does designer two, designer two or three only have three? So again, being able to dig through that context and understanding that, you know, a person can do, you know, 15 logos in the time that it takes to do you know, one big presentation or a print piece or a website even. So again, like looking at the data and understanding it's not apples to apples is, is again, part of why we need project managers to contextualize those numbers. 
But I think to your point, AI can really help us to gather that data, to analyze that data. And, you know, your, your idea of asking for suggestions on, on cost cutting or budget management, like you said, some of those ideas are actually really good. So <laughs> being able to take that list as a project manager and saying, hey, you know, we don't have rent. We're not going to talk about that because our team is remote. But, you know, maybe we do need to audit the number of, of backend plugin licenses that we have. Are we looking at our project management tool periodically and making sure that we're paying for the right number of seats if our team has has shrunk or expanded or whatever? Are, you know, are we spending the right money on licensure? Are we getting the best deal? Um, you know, even things like we're paying for certain tools monthly versus annually. Sometimes there is a cost savings. So when you're when you're thinking through some of those things, I think that your example is a great one of places that we can take the data that we have and contextualize it and then go act against it. So that's, that's the place where you really need the project manager is to say, Hey, this is the data we have versus having the project manager spend, you know, a day a week or two days a week on, on some of these admin things and and really running those numbers. Um, You mentioned also weekly status updates. Um, if your status update was a template and you're just plugging in numbers and maybe changing the colors from red, green, or yellow, I don't know that you really have to disclose that, that you're using AI to do that because you may have been using you know, some other kind of automation within um, like a Google Sheet where the fields and cells are linked or, or something like that in the past. So I think these are places that we're just going to be able to go a little bit faster using AI. Mm-hmm. Your answer has got me thinking here while we're talking about data analysis and insights in uh, using AI. We're focusing on us project managers, but we're not the only people on the team. We're not the only ones who are going to be affected by artificial intelligence, whether it's using it, whether it's, it's, it's uh, receiving artificial intelligence output. How do we prepare everybody for this? What is our responsibility as project managers today uh, helping our teams, whether it's in a digital agency, whether it's in healthcare, whether it's in road construction, doesn't matter. What is our responsibility as project managers helping our teams take the steps towards the inevitable arrival of artificial intelligence in their world? Sure, I think it's not, I think it's it's twofold. One is helping folks manage that risk piece that we talked about. So making sure that you know we're we're appropriately coaching our agency owners and leaderships like where we think that we should be consulting a legal expert. So you know, being the one to to raise your hand, raise the flag, and say, "Hey, this isn't sitting right with me. Let's talk about you know the legal piece of this or you know if it's not legal something else and then the other piece of it is really around that change management and communication so really you know talking to the team in in team meetings and status going over you know what is the ai doing what are you doing um asking for feedback getting their questions and concerns answered um you know if somebody is running scared that ai is going to take their job you know a month from now they're probably not focused on doing their best work. So if that's not the case, how do we make sure that this person is feeling comfortable and confident and able to continue to do their best work as we're moving forward? So I think it's really around developing that change management process and and how that operates in your agency. I know one of my agency clients right now does a, uh, they do like a half an hour of kind of team hangout and talk about things that are on their minds. Sometimes they play games, sometimes they do some like kind of more robust getting to know each other kind of exercises, uh, maybe around, you know, communication styles and stuff like that. But I know a couple of weeks ago, they all just sat down and and talked about AI because they just hadn't had a a place or a space to talk about it. So their PM said, hey, let's use this half an hour and everybody kind of show us what you've learned, say what you want to say about it, what are you curious about? So I think having some of those forums along the way for people to talk about it, to ask questions, to try it. Obviously, this is something that is newer or at least newer in how big it got so quickly. And it's something that people are are still trying to respond to. I mean, even you can hear in my responses, there's still a lot that I don't know. And so I think giving people the space to talk about it and, and creating those places where we can talk about it, we can test it, 
and we can action against it will will help people to feel more comfortable and confident either using it or knowing when to start to ask those questions. Mm-hmm. Yeah, thank you very much uh, for this. Uh, we have one more topic before we get to the takeaways here, and that is integrating artificial intelligence into your agency. And here, I'd like to uh, I'd like to hear from your experience. Um, what are some of the things that um, agency owners, project managers out there can do today on the road to integrating artificial intelligence into their digital agencies? I think it's really around, you know, cautious experimentation. So maybe trying things internally, you know, if this is something you do want to take client facing, try it internally, see how it goes. Um, you know, Cornelius, your example of our business, maybe it's using it to help create blog content or, you know, some sales messaging or something that you're going to then edit like you did for the agency, not for a client. Um, looking at the different features of the project management tools that are available that are enabled by AI, you know, start looking at them, make sure you understand where that data is going, start testing it. Um, you know, I, I think it's, at least right now with how popular this is, I think it's okay to move a little bit slow and then quickly. So instead of making assumptions or guessing, try things out, see how they sit with you. Um, you know, look to see how, um, how some of these products are positioned, if they have case studies already that you can take a look at or webinars that you can join um, so that you're actually able to then maybe ask questions of the people that are, you know, selling and operating these tools so that you really have a deep understanding of how they work and, and how, how it's best to leverage them. So if I was going to integrate AI into my agency, that's really how I would start is, you know, a little bit cautious, but, but I really do encourage people to, Get, their, like, get your hands in it, see what it feels like, see what it looks like. But, you know, we, we don't want to make that 180 of, of now we do everything for every client using AI. Um, and, and I don't think that's where anybody's encouraging this to go. But um, definitely starting starting to test versus make make assumptions about how it would, could work in your business. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that, that is a very good approach, right? Uh, trial and error. And um, we have one comment question here from Beatrice. What about artificial intelligence training for project managers and other staff? I can't speak to other staff, but I can give you my basic idea for project managers. And I I keep going on and on about this one. If you are a project manager, the number one foundational skill that you need is data literacy. Without data literacy, you cannot enter the world of artificial intelligence and really harness its power completely and and uh, and fully, right? So to me, data literacy is a foundation of, uh, of the training that you need as a project manager. And then, you know, you, you can expand from there. Go towards learning how to use artificial intelligence I mean, chat GPT and BARD are free. Uh, use it, right? Learn from it. See what it does and how it helps you and, and how you could integrate this into your day-to-day life. That's kind of my, my idea. There are books out there. There are webinars out there. So you can, you can really delve into this very, very quickly. There are even podcasts out there. Not specific for project managers, more artificial intelligence uh, in in general depends on how deep you want to go. Uh, where do you see see this here? Um, the question from Beatrice. Uh, what about AI training for project managers? Where would you start? I would probably start the same place as you said. I think we will start to see as more project managers are using it, that there will become more like PM specific training, just like we have for, for other things across the discipline. Um, you know, if you're a PM managing websites, there may be certain courses that you, you gravitate towards um, versus, you know, again, if you're a PM in construction and you're talking about things that are applicable more to that industry. So I do think that in the very near future, if they're not already almost released, is that there will be courses specific to PMs leveraging um, AI. Um, some of the tools that, that I mentioned at the beginning of the show, 
probably also have, you know, they have their support documentation, obviously. I'm sure there are webinars that if they're not out today, will be out soon so that folks can jump on and learn more about, you know, the, the AI capabilities of those specific tools. So it's where I'd start, but I think in the next, you know, probably eight to 12 weeks, we will probably see coursework for, you know, PMs may hopefully, fingers crossed, at least for me, that there are things that we can do to get PDUs um, while we're learning about AI and mm -hmm. how it will in potentially impact our roles. Yeah, and if you don't want to wait eight to 12 weeks, uh, how about zero weeks? Last, uh, the last episode on the Project Management Podcast, so this is 488, 487, I think it's 487, could be 486 or 487, um, is me doing an over an hour long PowerPoint presentation on introduction to artificial intelligence for project managers. So pm-podcast.com <laughs> slash 487. And yes, one PDU for those of you who are PMI certified. And you are very welcome, Beatrice. Thank you for asking the question. And now we are going to delve in, or, or delve in, we're going to dive <laughs> in, we're going to take the plunge here, uh, jumping off the cliff, and we are going to be using artificial intelligence. Marissa, what are your takeaways? What do you think are the big notions that our audience should take away from today's conversation? Sure, probably a little different than I said at the beginning, but really, um, <laughs> start start playing with it start learning about it you know listen listen to your last episode of the podcast i know i'm going to for that pdu um since i need a few <laughs> um <laughs> start having conversations um you know i, I think kind of keep your pulse on on what's going on in the news with with ai so that as your teams are are thinking about it or asking about it you're prepared for what's coming. And then I think the thing that, that you said, Cornelius, that really resonated with me around upskilling around that data literacy piece, I think regardless of, of where we go with AI as, as project managers, having that data literacy is going to be critical for our success, you know, moving forward, especially just with how, how much data is available now and how data driven decisions are starting to become. So I think anything that we as PMs can do on the data literacy side, it is just going to benefit us um, in the long run as we start to think about, you know, what does the future of being a project manager look like? Mm -hmm. And I am surfing the web right here just to make sure that I was right. Yes, indeed, I was absolutely correct. It is episode 487. So pm-podcast.com slash 487. That is Introduction to AI for Product Managers and pm-podcast.com slash 485, 485 is Data Literacy for <laughs> Project Managers. Marissa, thank you. Thank you so much for this wonderful conversation. Very insightful. Appreciate it. Of course. Happy to be here. All right. Thank you, everybody, for joining us today. Uh, don't forget... Uh, while our website here is pm-podcast.com, where you can go and learn about uh, all the other episodes we have, Marissa's website is at mtufferconsulting.com. When you go to our website, you can get up to 60 free PDUs just by listening to the podcast. And for this episode, you can probably get just about one PDU. Our email address is info at pm-podcast.com in case you want to reach out. And finally, here is a very fitting quote to end this discussion. If you think math is hard, well then try digital marketing. And with that, thank you for joining us today again. Until next time.